Today I'm going to be talking about the student's t-test, also known as just simply the t-test, and how to perform the analysis in SPSS, as well as how to interpret the results. To, so just a bit of background information on this test. It is usually used to determine if two sets of data are significantly different from each other and is most commonly applied when the test statistic would follow a normal distribution. The T statistic was introduced in 1908 by William Seeley Gossett, a, a chemist working for the Guinness Brewery in Dublin, Ireland. Student was his pen name, so it really a student's t-test has nothing to do with scholars as such, but it was really just another surname or name being used next to a test or a hypothesis or theory. The t-test should only really be called a t-test or a student's t-test when the variances of the two populations that you're measuring are assumed to be equal, also known as homogeneous. The form of the test used when this assumption is dropped is sometimes called the Welch t-test or the Welch's t-test and I'll be talking about that test another time. So for the data that I'm going to be using today in my example it comes from a, a study by Rosenthal and Jacobson from an article called Pygmalion in the Classroom. Rosenthal and Jacobson in 1968 informed classroom teachers that some of their students showed unusual potential for intellectual gains. Eight months later, the students identified to teachers as having, for, as having potential for unusual intellectual gains showed significant greater gains in performance on a test said to measure IQ than children who were not so identified. And I'll be working with that data today. So in group one, which was the experimental group, the students were told that the teachers were told that these students had some great potential. And in the second group, these students were not told anything. All the teachers were not told anything about these students. So in just having a look at how I've entered the data, all the scores, regardless of which group they're in, are entered into one column and then I use a, a variable coding one for experimental group participants and two for control group participants but that's not all you have to do because you have to let SPSS know what these variables mean and what these numbers actually stand for so you go to the variable view at the bottom here and then you for the group tab you go to values and you say one value one equals label experimental and two equals a label comparison and if you want to also make the scores the measure can be scale because it goes it's a continuum and for group ordinal so let's actually get to the test we go to analyze compare means and independent samples t-test so, getting back to the default, we would have our variables that we entered here in this left-hand column-ish thing, or box. And we have what we want to measure in the right-hand boxes. So, because group is our grouping variable, experimental and control, we will make these, we put that variable in the grouping variable box and define the groups as group 1 and group 2. And then for scores, this is what we want to see where the difference lies, if there's a difference in score between these two groups. So we'll go there and there. And you can also go to options. And if you want to change your confidence interval, this is the place to do it. And then, OK. So having a look at the output for this t-test, Going to the group statistics first, we can see that both the experimental and comparison groups had 20 individuals each, n equals 20 for each, whilst the experimental mean, also meaning the average of the scores, was 27 for experimental, and the comparison was 11, well, basically 12, but 
with while the experimental had a standard deviation of 12 and standard deviation of 14 for comparison and standard mean error of 2 and 3. So actually going to the t-test we can see here in Levine's test for quality of variances which is what you test for to see, determine if the groups have um, equal variance or are they a homogeneous group sample and because this is not significant we can take the assumption that variances are equal or homogeneous and but here yeah, this is the the all telling significance test it is 0.001 so therefore it is very significant meaning that there is a significant difference between the groups and that this difference is very unlikely to be determined or happen by chance and that's pretty much the analysis or the interpretation you want to do for a, a simple t-test but if you have any other questions about this just leave a comment on the channel on the video and I'll try to answer it